All right, guys. So uh, I just recorded a video uh, about the significance of today's date. Uh, well, I have actually just recorded it, but by the time you're watching this, I haven't just recorded it. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, it was about the significance of today's date and uh, also just about how Liverpool fans have been there for me over the years. Um, hey, I'm there for them as well, you know. When people come to me and got a problem, I do everything I can to them. It works both ways, right? Uh, but what I didn't mention in that video, which I should have done really, uh, was my best friend Smooth. Some of you see him on the stream on a weekend, on a Saturday night. Uh, you know, he's he's on the intro to the Cop Talk podcast that has been for days. Um, it's a great intro. I love his thing, his, what he says on there. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it includes a swear word and YouTube will tell me off. But, you know, I was just thinking when my mum died, Smooth left America immediately to come to England to be with me for a... I don't know, 10 days, two weeks or something. He just he came all that way from America for me. And he, this is a guy that, he, he, you know, he's just one of us. He can't afford to do things like that. He took time off work and he came and supported me, you know. So props to uh, Smooth. He's amazing. And also, he, had, he didn't have any uh, tattoos at the time. No tattoos. Uh, and uh, one tattoo that he, that he has now, he got at the time on his shoulder was... My mum's name, uh, date of birth, and the date that she passed. Uh, because he loved my mum, and my mum loved, loved Smooth because she thought he was a sensible lad and not someone that would lead you in the wrong directions in life, you know. <clears throat> so Smooth is, uh, Smooth is like a brother to me. Well, he's my brother. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but he's a good kid. So sometimes you might hear me mention Smooth. You know, that's my my best friend, and uh, he will be in bits today, will Smooth. <laughs> smooth will be worse than me today. Uh, his profile picture on Facebook will, uh, it'll change all black. We once went to, uh, when I got married in Vegas, in 2013, I think, uh, Smooth was my best man. And we all went to a show together, took the kids, uh, his partner, my partner, and we went to a show, and it was a woman that was singing, uh, you know, like Whitney Houston songs, like a tribute. So when I say a show, I don't mean like in a pub. I mean like this huge, you know, you know what Vegas is like. This huge venue it was a big deal, and um, she sung like different, you know, like all the, the different chick songs and that. And there was one point where she started singing a Whitney Houston song, and Smooth stood up. So which meant that the whole line of about like 80 people all had to stand up as well and just walked off like mid through it. Like, and I'm like, he didn't say anything to me or anything. I'm sat next to him. He just got up and went and his, his partner's looking at me and I'm looking at her and we're all looking at him going, what's up with him? So I left it a few minutes and I went, I'll have to go and see what's up with it, what's what's gone on. Because his stomach was not right. So I, got, <laughs> I, got, I stood up, so they all had to stand up again. You know, and uh, I went outside. I said, what's, what's, what's wrong? He went, I'm not listening to her. And I went, well, he went, it's Whitney Houston. He went, I'd want nothing to do with Whitney Houston. I said, it's not Whitney Houston. And he went, no, but it's her music. And I went, right. And he went, your mum fought for her life for eight months. And he went, that Whitney Houston, she didn't care about life. All that, you know, things that she did, drugs and whatnot. So I went, all right, man, okay. <laughs> can't argue with that. Uh, yeah, smoothies. I love smoothies. That kid would do anything for me. Best people, part, one of the nicest people in the world. I'm very lucky to have such good friends. And, you know, because of me, he supports Liverpool. Uh, he's got his... I need to get him a new Liverpool top. I ain't, I ain't got him one for years. Uh, when he visited England uh, the very first time... I got him a Liverpool top with Smooth 7-6 on the back. That used to be his gamer tag on the Xbox. That's how we uh, that's how we met. That's how me and Smooth met. From playing Rainbow Six Three back in the day on Xbox. And the first day we actually argued. Uh, and I shouted something at him. It wasn't very nice. And we argued. Because uh, we had another friend that we joined. And we were like mutual friends. And, you know, this, this, this chap... And he was like, this is smooth, this is done, right, right, And something was said during the, you know, the gameplay, serious business, innit? And I was like, well, you could... And he was like, well, you could... 
and we absolutely, uh, you know, tore into each other. Uh, and I maybe said some things that uh, I shouldn't have said. I was a bit younger then. And uh, my best friends, he became my best friend, at, uh, you know, my best man at my wedding and everything. Any, anything. I, if, I, I could speak to you for hours about Smooth. Please uh, subscribe to my other YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Duncan Odom, because I'm going to start making some of these videos like this. I know the majority of you here for the Liverpool stuff and that. Of course you are. That's why I'm here. But, you know, these people are part of Cop Talk. And if you're part of the Cop Talk gig, you'll have heard of Smooth, you know. So, what you have to understand is these videos that I make for the Cop Talk community, they're not for randomers. I love it when random people come in and say, I just found your channel, it's mint, I love it. I want to be part of it. That, that is amazing. I, I swear down, man, it's such a nice feeling when I see a comment like that. But I reckon the majority of people that watch the videos are just randomers that don't comment, don't like, don't do anything, just leave. You know, because they're just hunting for the next thing to do with Liverpool, which is fine. They're not the people I want round here, though. So I want you to stay if you're new. I'd love that. But you have to understand that this video, my videos, uh, you know, I do waffle on and I'm talking about people that are important to me. He's a good lad. So, to the point. The Man City drama. So... That's interesting. I saw a video yesterday I'd never seen before. Well, I say a video like a clip on television, um, which said, which was Pep Guardiola saying, "If I find out there's been anything, you know, untoward happening at this club, like I'll be gone." He said he quit. Have you seen that video? Have you read those comments? Are you aware of those? And he sounded really genuine, like you know, they've told me that there's nothing, they, that there's nothing wrong, uh, you know, but this is something I would not tolerate. And I do actually feel he would do that, you know. Do you think that, or am I being naive? Yeah, because I'm not usually naive. And to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of Pep Guardiola. I'm not. I think he's a bit smug. There you go. I right. believe it or not, Sir Alex Ferguson, I miss him. You know, because I miss the rivalry. I hated him, but it was like a love-hate relationship. Pep Guardiola, I don't, don't hate him. Well, I'm not really a big fan of his, to be honest. And when I hear people saying he's better man, uh, manager than the Sir Alex Ferguson, it's ridiculous. We all know that Bob Paisley was the best. best which one. Anyway, so the Man City thing. I, I wonder if he would uh, bail on that. What do you think is going to happen with that? You see, I'm quite embarrassed by a lot of Liverpool fans that I've seen on social media overnight talking about the thing, you know, this, this is our title. You know, and I, yeah, I get it, but... Some of them are going a bit weird with it. But, you know, to me, to be honest, yeah, keep your titles, keep them, because I want to go through life. I'd rather go through life thinking we won that fair and square. Because I tell you what, I understand why people are saying give the titles to us. I really do. And there's so many. I mean, I was looking at some of the different facts of how things would have panned out, you know, had they not cheated or whatnot. And I hate, do you know what? I hate cheats. This is why I had a massive problem with people like Luis Suarez. As great as he is, I know what you think, okay, don't, but no, 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 no. You've got to beat your opponents fair and square. Who remembers Robbie Fowler when he had that penalty? Uh, I think it was David Seaman, right, for Arsenal, and he brought him down or whatever, or Fowler went to ground and he got up and he went, no, 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 well, yeah, he didn't touch me, and the penalty was given, and Fowler was like, no, 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 it's not a penalty. You can imagine the manager like, shut your mouth, right? As all of us were. Amazing, right? Still scored it though, if my memory serves him rightly. He didn't tap it or anything. <laughs> um, if you're a young lad or a young lass, because I don't know how old you'd have to be to, to have seen that. I don't even know when it was. I, if my memory serves me right, it was the away creamy coloured kit. What year was that? It's got to be around 2000, I think. Someone I don't know. Okay, too old. But yeah, I like, I like, uh, I don't like. Was it Thierry Henry? Did he, did he have, was that against the Irish or something like that? Uh, Suarez. I, I don't just, I just, I have no time. I never forgive me, honestly. Forgive and forget people saying life. I'll never forgive anything like that, ever. Because you ruin it. Like that little, see, I could, I, you see, I could easily get banned from YouTube because there's a certain Argentinian footballer that ruined my life when I was a kid with that hand from God. And I'm not going to say to you 
how I would refer to him. And I know what you think, you're thinking, don't come on now. He's passed away. Oh, well. <clears throat> no, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. I don't care. I, I mean, I, yeah, I care. But I've got no idea, man, how much I hated him. And I love Terry Butcher. And I love Peter Shilton. When they've been interviewed over the years, ago. gone, nah, I never forgive him. <laughs> and this is why when they were talking about the Arsenal and the Tottenham carrying on Saul Campbell on the, on the wireless the other week when I was in England listening to it, I was on public transport, don't tell anyone, I was on a bus, from an airport though, right, and I'm listening to it, and that Jim White's waffling on saying, oh, let it go, let it go, no, not let it go, no, anyway, so Man City, uh, what do I think, I mean, I think that the majority of the, I've got to be careful how I say it, I think a lot of fans uh, will be thinking, Egh. That will happen, and that's kind of what I think. Now will happen. I mean, I don't get me wrong, guys. If the, if we did strip them of the titles and give them to us or whatever or whatever we're entitled to, I haven't really gone into it because I just think, yeah. But if that happened, I mean, it should be amazing. But do you know what? If they got relegated, that'd be even funnier, man. Right? If you mint. Oh, but this is a thing, right? Has it changed your views about yeah, Middle East ownership? Hasn't changed my views, couldn't care less. Not, not at all. Would you, did, you know, you can't pick one person or one group and say they, they represent every other nation or something. That's ridiculous. Uh, you know, look, come on, right? In life, right? If we, well, <clears throat> I might have friends, you know, that might, you know, that might submit the odd receipt or something, you know, that they're not supposed to, you know, like, you got to, but the thing is, we're just getting by, aren't you? I'm not sure I'd do that if I was a multi-millionaire. Of course I wouldn't do that, would I? Because I'd have someone doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no. I don't like, uh, I understand the little man in life, you know, uh, having to, uh, you know, bend things a little bit, or, you know, if you pay me in cash, we'll keep it quiet. I get all that, you know. I'm the most unluckiest guy in the world because my entire revenue is all digital. <laughs> So I can't do anything like that. Oh, dear me. Um, but no, I mean, like, if you know, when you get really, really wealthy people evading the system, I don't like that. Because I think, like, in England, for example, you are, you know, taking, uh, you know, money away from the NHS, for example, or whatever. I don't know. That. Maybe that's a simplistic way of looking at it. Uh, but that Rishi Sunak, for example, you know, when they were doing all that, you know, with the with the you know, the, we're talking about people worth what six hundred, seven hundred million, maybe more. I don't know. You know, doing these little tax things and that. It's just like now, nah, wasn't he the chancellor at the time? And his miss, it was his missus, wasn't it? The non-dom thing or something. I don't know. And anyway, you've got to have morals in life or principles, you know. And um, I'm the kind of guy like that. If I was extremely wealthy, then. I'd be one of those that would pay a little bit more into the system, absolutely. You know, so when you get these people, you know, these big billionaires and, you know, these oil people owning a club like Man City, um, I'm actually really disappointed because, you know, I've always, like, bigged them sort of people up, uh, you know, and um, it's disappointing, really, because I'll be honest with you, when Man City did start winning things, I it was nice to see a different you know, team challenging, as I always, I'm always like, I'm a football fan, you know, I want Liverpool to win everything, but it gets a bit boring when it's always Man United at the time, and Man United Arsenal, and then Man City came along, and so now I would like to see Newcastle do some good, um, but you know, I think that some of these allegations, if proven, are really like, you know, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, I, I personally don't like it when a team, uh, you know, buys success, I don't like that. I would never want Liverpool to be like that. You know, I, when we talk about Middle East ownership, it's because I think that they're diehard fans, football fans. Um, you know, Man City want to be the best. They want to be as big as, you know, they've always wanted to be better than Real Madrid. And the reason I can say that is because I know people or did know people, excuse me, that were in their circle because some of them would have come to Liverpool if they, uh, if Liverpool had been taken over by that region many years ago. It doesn't matter, it's a long story, I've talked about it before, but 
Um, and, and I know that they, they, they didn't just want to win titles, they wanted to make the club big. So they wanted to be like Real Madrid, which if you think about it, really, they've got, they're actually doing that right now because I hate Real Madrid, the way that that club operates. I've got to be honest with you. I used to think it was a prestige club, uh, you know, but when you look at the way that Real Madrid operate, I don't think it's very good. And maybe you don't care about things like that. Maybe it's an age thing, but I'm all about winning fair and square. It's like when you play, you know, like when I go on the Xbox and play PUBG and stuff like that. You know, I wouldn't. I would want to. I want to play like. I don't care if I get slaughtered in every game. I'm not very good. Right? Uh, I'm, I'm more of a team player. Uh, I'm old. <laughs> My brain doesn't process things very fast. Uh, you know, the kids are brilliant. But if someone said to me, "Well, you can do this hack or buy this," and then you, no, I'd rather just get slaughtered every time because. I know that I'm not cheating myself. So I've never understood that mentality in any walk of life. Now, we know when it comes to football, you might, you know, see a player go down, you know, you might go down, you know what I mean? Like, go down, you know, so this has part of the game a little bit, isn't it? You know, like, there's a difference between someone having genuine contact and you going over versus, uh, you know, a dive. You know what I mean? Like, Klinsman. Who remembers Klinsman back in it when he was linked with Liverpool? Do you remember that? That was them lot, wasn't it? Klin Jürgen Klinsman. I don't like cheats, that's it, I don't like cheats, simple as that. If you listen to my Dunk Knows Best podcast, for example, that's on Spotify and all good podcast places, Apple Podcasts, whatever, I'm always talking about cheats, can't stand them. Now you want to win fair and square. If you if you are, like, there's, a, there's one thing between bending the rules a little bit, or manipulating things a little bit, but on an extortionate amount, like a very wealthy person uh, exploiting the tax system, or a, a, a football club really like going to great lengths. And, you know, the suggestions. I remember reading an article, I think it was last year, about this company that had some kind of alleged partnership with Manchester City. And I'm sure that this example will be in all that stuff. I haven't read it, and I'm not going to read it. Uh, read it, sorry. But, you know, I remember reading it. It was so dodgy. Do you know what I mean? It was like you, you could track down... You know, the, the the CEO or the owners or the things. It's like, oh, this company doesn't even... It, it, it was... I can't say it was blatant, uh, you know... Uh, what's the word? Uh, fraud or ex exploit or whatever. It just looked really, really, really sus. Uh, and I put those articles out at the time. Uh, so anyway, yes, I would love, you know, to be, you know, awarded this... You know, I think it's happened before in Italian football in Syria. It would be brilliant. I mean, this, I mean, we would have to bring people back and have a celebration. It would be amazing. It really would. But I'm not going to get my hopes up. All right? I'm not going to get my hopes up. And at the end of the day, if that doesn't happen, every Man City fan we ever see in our life, and trust me, I see some, and they are, they've turned into quite smiley people, really. Uh, a bit like my Newcastle support of supporting friends going at the minute. You might be watching this, Ken. You know, like... I always wanted Newcastle to do well, you know, because I think they're really good fans. But this is what I thought of Man City back in the day. Uh, you know, they were loyal. And then you've got Newcastle now, and he is like, yesterday he was on Twitter, look at I retweeted him yesterday, he was like, oh, would you be in a mid-table club and all that, you know. And I know it's banter and that, but he takes it to another level. Like, in our little WhatsApp group, you know, because he's one of the lads that I meet on a Friday... He's like, it's another level to the point where we're just like, oh, shit, can't be doing with you. Do you know what I mean? So he gets to a cup final, and I would always want Newcastle to, to do well, normally, because I'd be thinking, well, they've not won anything. They've not won out. Even though it's that competition, I want them to win. But when they got to the final, because of what he's like now, I was like, well, I hope they get battered. And then I realised it was Manchester United. And I said to the other boys the other day, I said, I can't cheer Man United on, you know what I mean? But I'm going to have to endure him. Then I'm just going to have to do it, because all Newcastle fans are not making it. Well, I, think, I hope they don't become like that. Anyway, so, at least we can say to Man City fans, can't we say, well, you know, it was our title anyway. I mean, so, we don't cheat. I hope. I hate cheats. I can't stand cheats. I hate it. I can't explain to you how much I hate them. It's like bullies. I don't like bullies. I don't like cheats. Hmm. Anyway, that's that. Let me know your thoughts about Man City. I've got uh, five minutes more recording time left on my phone.
running out of uh, space on my phone. Man City, I don't know, I, mean, I reckon it'll take forever and I think there's a lot of you, you know, there's, I think a lot of people are like in this hysteria, they think we're going to get all this, but I know a lot of you will be going, now it'll happen, yeah, now it'll happen. I don't know, I don't know what will happen guys, I'll be very happy uh, if, if we got what we want, but I don't want to win something by, yeah, I don't, I don't know, you could say you don't want to win it by technicality, it's not really a technicality if the rules are being broken, is it? Because if I enter a competition... And I break the rules, I'll be disqualified from that, no matter what it is, whether it's a pub competition or a major competition. So I would say that if you break the rules and it's proven, because they've got to be proven, remember, uh, then you should forfeit that. You should. But I'm just not going down the route of being a cheerleader for it because I'm sure I'll end up disappointed. But, you know, they've banged on about financial fair play for years and what's right and what's not and stuff like that, then you've really got to enforce it. And from what I've seen over the years... You know, I think there are some of the smaller clubs that have been punished heavily uh, for this financial fair play thing, uh, and, and there should be set an example should be set. You know, because you've got to look at the way Chelsea are behaving at the moment. Maybe they're doing nothing wrong. Uh, I don't know. They should be. It should be punished absolutely. And if it was Liverpool Football Club, I'd be the first one to say we should be stripped of the titles and handed to the opposition, to the team that came on as well. I, and I swear down. I would say that. And some of you might be going, don't be so stupid. No, I mean it. I'm very principled on that stuff, guys. I won't want, wouldn't want anyone thinking that, uh, you know, I, I, I've won something from, from being like that. What's the point of that? You know what I mean? It's misleading. Don't like it. All right, then. Uh, oh, I've got... Oh. I've got a video for channel members today. Don't let me not put it online. And I, I'm sorry, guys. It has to be a private one. It's stuff that was put on a member's website last night. Uh, it is to do with uh, the ownership, the, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, if you are a CopTalk VIP member, you need to go on there immediately. If you haven't since last night, go in the, the Club Sale Forum or whatever it's called, Investment Club Sale Forum, you know which one it is, and look for... Uh, a post on there from last night that said American dinner date, I think, or dinner date or something like that. Uh, I will be talking about that today on here in a video. And I have to limit that video. I have to restrict that video to channel members only because I want a quiet life, all right? And it, it, I think it's really, really interesting, that, uh, that stuff. But I'm not putting it on here for... Everybody out there to, uh, to 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 look at it. I, when when I make, when I do a members only video, it is either uh, sensitive information that I think shouldn't be out there, uh, or it's something that I think I just rather have a quiet life and just keep that you know those claims and things uh, between ourselves. You know, so I'll be doing that today. I'll do that for the the cop talk members. Uh, channel members, so if you're a, you, if you're a member of this YouTube channel, you will see it uh, later today. Or if you're not, you can go on the Cop Talk VIP members website and you can watch that video on there. And I will also make the audio available for the podcast patrons. So this is the people we have like a little. It's more of a secure environment. Well, a secure environment makes it sounds a bit, you know, MI five if MI five ish or something like. It's not like that. Um, but it's not something that I want to put out publicly, okay? So well, I'll have that video for you guys later today. And of course, you know, the, the, these people support my content uh, and they understand uh, they understand why I would want to uh, to keep that more private, I think. So that'll be coming up today. However, I need to uh, deal with this video, get this video online um, and crack on. So uh, thanks very much for the, the nice messages that some of you have sent today because of... Um, It'd be my mum's anniversary. Uh, I'm all right. And, uh, you know, we go again. You know, we crack on. Got to do that. There's nothing you, can, you can't change those things in life. Uh, so we're just, we're just going to be there for each other, uh, you know, as we can. And, and I'm all right, guys. All right. So I do appreciate you watching. Uh, and I'll be back with you later today. All right, guys. All right. I feel all right now, by the way. My sore throat's gone. I'm not coughing. So I think I'm almost uh, back to, I was going to say full health, but I don't think I've ever been full health since I was born. Ha, ha, ha.